Hey everyone, it's John with Seattle Coffee Gear. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We're gonna be talking about these four machines from Lelite. The Victoria, the Elizabeth, the Mara X, and the Bianca. Before we get started, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, click that subscribe button down below. This is especially helpful if you're in the middle of researching for your next coffee equipment purchase. Let us know if you've thought about buying one of these machines for yourself or if you have one of these Lelite machines. Your feedback helps other people who are considering purchasing one of these. Lelite has a lot of different models. So this video is one that we've been asked about for a long time. Just an overview explaining the models and the differences between them. We have crew reviews of each of these individually. So once you're done with this video, if you wanna learn more about one of these individual machines, check the description for links to those videos. The Victoria and the Elizabeth are a little bit more traditional with their stainless steel and black plastic finishes. On the Mara X and the Bianca, you get a choice of different colors, whether it's white, black, or stainless, and they also come with these nice wood accents. You do get slightly nicer accessories on the Mara X and the Bianca, like a bit of a nicer tamper. Let's dive in and start with the Victoria. The Victoria is a single boiler espresso machine that has a PID to regulate the temperature of that boiler. Because it's a single boiler, that means you can only steam or brew. You can't do both simultaneously. As a general piece of advice, we recommend steaming your milk first and then brewing espresso if you have a machine that can only do one thing at a time. It's a lot faster to cool something down than it is to heat something up. So your drink prep time is going to be a lot shorter Order if you steam your milk first and then brew your espresso. The Victoria is priced out very competitively compared to other Italian single boiler machines with the PID. You also get a shot timer built into the face of the machine and some pre-brew programming. It's not like a low pressure pre-infusion or ramp, anything like that, but you can choose the number of seconds for the pump to turn off, then to turn off and wait and come back on to finish brewing your shot. On the face of it, you also get a brew pressure gauge as well as a few buttons for steam and also for hot water out of that steam wand. Who is this machine for? Personally, I see the Victoria for somebody who doesn't do a ton of milk-based drinks, is more of a straight espresso drinker or somebody who drinks a lot of Americanos, but still needs to be able to steam milk in case they have company over that might want a latte or a cappuccino. That's a question I get asked a lot, actually. People who don't drink much milk, so they don't wanna spend the extra on a machine that has the ability to steam and brew at the same time because they won't really use that functionality. So if you don't drink a ton of milk, I'd take a good look at the Victoria. Moving along, we come up to the Elizabeth. The Elizabeth is a dual boiler model. It has PIDs for both the steam boiler and the espresso boiler, so you can control the specific temperature of each. This also means that it can steam and brew simultaneously. This machine does have a cool feature for pre-infusion where it uses the pressure of the steam boiler to softly infuse your coffee before the actual pump kicks on. It's a similar feature to other dual boilers like the Rancilio Silvia Pro X. I see it in a lot of models in this range and it's cool that they added it to this machine. You have pretty simple controls on the face of this machine. You get three buttons for programmable shot volumes for one or two shots. You also have a button for hot water, and then you have the Lelite Control Center, which is where you access things like your PID settings for temperature, as well as those pre-infusion settings that I mentioned. One thing I'll note about a dual boiler like this is they don't tend to be great for a lot of back-to-back milk-based drinks. So if you're somebody who entertains and a lot of your friends like milk-based drinks, something like this machine might not be the best for you. In the US, we have 110 volt power for normal household use. And because of that, most household machines that are dual boilers can only send power to one of the heating elements at a time. Because we all want our espresso to taste good, 
Most manufacturers prioritize sending power to that espresso boiler so that stays consistent. What that means is if you pull a shot and then steam milk back to back, the machine's gonna be focused on maintaining the temperature in that espresso boiler before it starts heating water to produce steam. If you make one or two drinks back to back, you might find yourself waiting for the machine to catch up and have good steaming pressure again. A dual boiler like this is good for a coffee drinker like myself. If you like to drink a good amount of straight espresso but enjoy the occasional milk-based drink and don't wanna wait for the machine to change between those two heat settings, something like this might be a good fit. I drink a lot of straight espresso and Americanos but occasionally like a latte or cappuccino or make something like that for my friends. It's a really good fit for somebody with my needs. Up next, we have the Mara X. We get a ton of questions about the Mara X because it looks so distinctive. It's also pretty compact, so it can fit in a lot of different spaces. This is a unique machine and we get a lot of questions about it. It's a heat exchanger machine, but Lilith added different settings to the PID for different coffees and different styles of use. You have settings to work well for different roast levels, as well as a setting to give you some extra steaming power. Because of the complexities of the programming of this machine, I probably wouldn't recommend this for a first machine for someone unless you're absolutely certain that coffee is gonna be a big hobby for you and the learning curve of those settings doesn't scare you. Because it's a heat exchanger and it has some of those other settings, that does lend itself to being a better fit for folks who drink a more balanced blend of milk-based drinks and straight espresso. Heat exchanger machines do have a leg up on dual boilers when it comes to steam production. Because they only have that one boiler, that means the machine can devote all the power to that one heating element and the machine can handle back-to-back -back drinks with greater ease. Something I should also mention as we're talking about these machines is Lilith has a very unique pump that's specific to their machines. The three of these machines have vibratory pumps, which means that they can't be plumbed in, but they're very quiet and have a slightly longer ramp up to pressure, which means it's easier to get good results from a wide variety of coffees while brewing espresso. The last machine we have to talk about is the Bianca. For a lot of customers we speak with, the Bianca is kind of like a grail machine or a lifetime machine. Maybe it's your end game that has all the features you want at this price point. In the past, you had to spend upwards of five, six, seven thousand dollars to get a machine that had the features that the Bianca has. That being said, to get all these features at this price point, they did have to mesh multiple systems together and the programming on it can be a little bit daunting, especially if you're not familiar with this level of espresso machine. Because there's so much content about the Bianca out there, talking about it as the ultimate in-game machine, a lot of customers wanting to future-proof themselves will consider the Bianca without thinking about the coffee that they like to drink. Personally, I found that the advanced features of the Bianca, like pre-infusion, post-infusion, and that flow control valve, lend it to more complex, lighter roasted coffees. So the question I'll ask customers is, do you see yourself buying those lighter roasted, complex, more expensive, often single origin coffees and taking five, 10, 15 minutes to mess with the settings and try and program the machine to get the most out of those coffees. If you see yourself wanting to do something like that, the Bianca is a great machine for you. This machine comes in at a great price point considering all those features. But to pack all that in without moving to a more expensive variable speed pump, they had to do some kind of crazy stuff. You have multiple valves inside the machine that control that pre-infusion time, your normal brew time, your post-infusion time, plus that paddle on top of the machine. Most of that's controlled through the little LCC or Lilith control center, and you have to go in and adjust the times for pre and post infusion. If you don't see yourself using those features and you don't like light roast coffee and you don't wanna spend the time I mentioned dialing those things in, I probably wouldn't suggest the Bianca for your needs. Being an espresso nerd myself, 
I love machines like the Bianca. I get excited about going into the control settings and messing with everything until I get something that I feel like is a winning combination. But I also talk to people who want to drink more medium roast stuff and they just want a great espresso like they get at their favorite coffee shop or they want to make a latte, a cappuccino or a cortado and that's really all they drink and they love that. So in that case, I would look at something else in the Lilith lineup or maybe one of the other machines on our website. Do you consider my thoughts a hot take? Give us a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Bianca and who it's ideal for. I'd love to hear from you. Well, we're a coffee focused company making videos about coffee equipment. So let's pull some shots on the Bianca. I'm gonna be using a nice light roast from Ethiopia and getting some great results out of that. Let's make some espresso and then we'll wrap it up. Well, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoy making coffee. I hope you do too. I hope that's the reason why you're watching these videos is because you wanna know more about coffee and coffee equipment. I know I mentioned it at the start, but if you're not already subscribed, please do that so you can see all the new releases from us. If you want even more info about Seattle Coffee Gear, you can sign up for our email newsletter. That's a great way to learn about upcoming sales and promotions, as well as new products, probably a little faster than our YouTube channel. As a thank you for signing up for that, we'll also send you a coupon that's good for 10% off one item. There are exclusions to that code, so be sure to chat with our sales or support team. You can actually chat with us using the bubble on our website. You'll get a real person to speak with. You can also call or email with any of those questions you have. We'd love to talk with you about coffee equipment and help you find your next right machine. As always, I appreciate you watching our videos and supporting our channel. I hope you have a great rest of your day and keep making coffee you love. See ya.